YouTubers. Welcome to my channel. Come on, let's get going. Hey YouTubers, please subscribe and click that notification bell so that way you know when I am having uh, new videos. And also, give me a thumbs up and leave me comments down below so that way I can hear what you guys want. And finally, please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Facebook is Amanda Suzanne. Twitter is Suzanne underscore Amanda. And TikTok is Ruby Red Queen. Today, we are doing a cooking video how to the visually impaired way. So, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, or that I'm going to do, I guess, is brown my, my uh, beef up. So. Let me... Babe, did you pull out the beef already? Okay. Let me pull out this and this. Thank you. And I'm gonna brown my beef. I've got two things of beef here. And we're gonna stick it in this pot and brown it up. One. And I clean as I go here. But each their own. chopper. I'm going to turn on the stove. And I know where the, um, let me show you. I know where the, I know where that six o'clock knob is right here because, or yeah, six o'clock, that's warm. If I go up a little higher, that's about medium high-ish, but I want it right about, I guess right about there, maybe a little higher. And I know that because it's based on the clock method. Low is over to the, um, like eight, nine o'clock. Six o'clock is the medium. And about four o'clock and up is high. But we don't need high. Now, I'm gonna chop up this meat. start chopping a little easier once it um, starts cooking. And the pan was already on the stove, but normally I would center the pan based on the heat. So I would put the pan off the heat, feel over top, not touching the burner, but just touching, you know, feeling over top, and then place the pan center. I can hover the hand around the edges to feel how um, how hot that heat is. My husband thinks he's slick because he just walked out of the kitchen like he's doing something wrong. When all fairness, he got his beer out and is having some beer. I can't see you anyway, so... You might be able to see your body. <laughs> That's my husband, y'all. God love him. All right, we're gonna let this cook up a little more. Hanging all the excess burger. All right, and while 
while this is cooking, I am going to grab some drinkies, drinks, because it's Christmas and I need a drink. So, we'll be back. Okay, so now the meat is starting to cook. And I'm actually going to grab a spatula so I can uh, pull it up a little bit easier here. So I've got a spatula and I'm going to just start kind of, oh, I don't like that spatula. So, just start chopping it and then I'll flip it. the grease. There's probably so much grease in this meat. It's okay. We're going to drain it out though. I'm trying to get all the excess meat off here. Set that aside. I actually got these spatulas for my wedding. They are good grips. Um, they come in a couple different colors. There's like a blue and we got a red. Look at all that grease. Anyhow, I also got this uh, Dutch oven for a uh, bridal shower, and we cook on this thing all the time. Um, it's good for making chilies and soups, and it's huge, and it's heavy duty, and it cooks really well. All right, now I'm going to grab this. And we live in a studio, so there's really not much um, covered space. Everything out. So I'm gonna grab 
grab everything we need. You want to make sure the handles are off to the side because you could accidentally knock it off the stove and that would just be a bad, bad day. You could hurt somebody. So you want to make sure the handles are either to the center or off to the side here if you're cooking with a skillet, which I am not. that it's almost cooked because I've got the light, I've got the contrast, I can see pink. So I can tell that it's almost cooked. And in a second here, I'm going to get rid of this grease. I'm just going to I'm flipping towards me because um, that way I can have better control over it. Alright, this is looking good. Just another minute. I'm going to show you how to layer the pans. Side. 
And I'm gonna jump this crease. I need some hot pads though, this is hot. Yeah, this pan definitely gets hot. Put it off. Let me see if I can just turn it off. But you don't need to see that. I'm just dumping the grease off right now. And it's going into the colander. Need a lot of strength to hold this pan up. Ooh. And I'm gonna use this pan again here. Alright, the hot pads away. And then I'm going to pour this back in. Pan. And then I'm going to need the calendar. Alright. Now, I am going to layer the pan here. Um, let's see. Actually, first I'm going to make the batter and then layer the pan. But I don't want this meat to cook any further, so I'm going to move this actually to the back burner. So it stops cooking and let that burn up cool. Plug in my thumb. Alright, so now that we've got the beef drained, now I'm going to tilt the phone down a little more. Now we're going to do the ingredients here. I am going to grab. God for edit. Um, I'm gonna grab a jar of sauce. And normally I like using Hunt's um, tomato sauce, but this is what we got. Like I said, I would use Hunt's tomato sauce, um, but we gotta do what we gotta do. I'm still stirring. I think that's good. I'm going to add my cottage cheese in, and then set that aside, and then put an onion up. Now, for cottage cheese, less is definitely not more. We are adding the entire container in. Normally, I like using large curd. However, it's hard to come by sometimes. So we got what we got. Good. 
Y'all are fine. Just mixing the cheese with the sauce and the meat. It's going to be absolutely delicious. And I use cottage cheese rather than ricotta because I, honestly I don't like the taste of ricotta. So. And the only time I like cottage cheese is when it's in lasagna or something else. Here. And so for so for cracking this egg, some people crack it on the side of the pan, which you can do, and which I will probably do. Crack it, and then I grab this little divot here, and I kind of pull it apart. So that way you don't get shells in. And then I stir that up in. And the egg is good for thickening things, um, making sure things are kind of thicker, thicker than a Snickers. Stir it stirred up really good, y'all. Everybody makes their lasagna a little bit differently. This is how my mom made ours um, growing up. And so this is how I make mine lasagna. And this is where this sauce is like. Still getting the egg maybe stirred up in. Definitely a good muscle exercise, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, now that it's done, I'm gonna move this to the back burner. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, so we're cutting an onion. Got my onion here. So I've got a knife here, and you definitely want to make sure you keep your hands back. Now what I normally do is I will cut this onion in half so it's not so rocky rolly, because right now it's rocking and rolling. My husband's trying to tell me how to cook, and I hate that. That's why I don't cook very often. And I put my hand on top of the knife so that way my hands were not on the blade in any way, shape, or form. And I'm only going to use half the oven. I think I'll use a smaller half. Now, with knife safety, I never want to leave a knife on the cutting board. I always want to lay it either off to the side, which I'm going to do, with the blade facing the cutting board for safety reasons. And then I'm going to call my husband to have him put this onion away, please. And I'm taking the wrapper off here.
and I have this little knobby here. I'm gonna just chop that off. So I'm gonna pick up my knife. I'm gonna just chop that knob off. There's nothing on the back. Now, make sure all the skins are off. And I'm gonna slice and dice. And I'm keeping my fingers back. I'm using a claw method. My thumb is definitely tough because you don't want to get your thumb. <laughs> if you hear that in the background, it's my puppy running out of all kinds of milk. Is it his or the cat? <laughs> we had a cat too. We gave the dog um, some tennis balls, balls for his. Uh... Okay, and I'm just very cautious about my fingers and keeping them back, so that way I don't accidentally chop them off. I'm taking the knife and kind of just chopping. I got my hand on the top part and I'm just chopping as I go. But this is how somebody who's visually impaired safely cuts. My eyes are starting to water. The one thing with onions woo, is the fact that they cut nicely, but they also fly. And you do not want to touch your eyes. And my husband's expecting my onion. Watch your hands. What? Oh, peel? Mm -hmm. I thought I got it all. Thank you. This is where sighted people come in handy, in case you miss something. Now, for cleaning off this knife, there's not much on there, but you want to start from the top, not the blade side, and kind of just run your finger around the top. Is that good? Or should I chop a little more? Uh, definitely chop more. All right, would you like to take over and chop, Mr. Chef? Please? I'm just gonna show you his match out and skills. After he puts the family out. I'm sorry, honey. I mean I thought I had it all. I'm washing my hands because the onion really like it. I've also heard, and Justin, maybe you can confirm this, stainless steel will take that onion off the yeah. hands. They make bars for that. It also helps wood corn. Garlic too? This is 
why we need an organizer for these. Do you want to put that in the pan? I mean, you can if you want. I got all the stuff out of it as possible. Okay. And I'll stir that way. See, he's doing the no-no method of leaving your knife laying on the card. I mean, I'm doing the chef method. Yeah. This doesn't work for visually impaired people. personal preference. in half to the 
since I made lasagna noodles. Probably gonna get about two layers out of here. If you want, I can make a second small pan. Sean, we can save the rest. I think two layers, because I, I definitely... Because we won't have enough for a second small pan. Oh, ye of little faith here. Normally these break a little easier. There we go. Sorry, these noodles are not breaking the way I normally break them. All right, then sauce. would be good. Yeah. You may not actually have enough sauce. Or we'll, we'll have enough sauce, we'll but enough sauce. I meant to freeze. It might just be just a little wet. Well, if you... He's trying so hard. <laughs> Budge! mozzarella. Some more shredded cheese. Yummy, yummy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's how you 
Push this around so I get all the areas. I may have to open that second bag up. Yeah, we'll that second bag. <laughs> Maybe not. Alright. And what you forgot to do. Preheat the oven? Yeah. Now, normally for someone who's visually impaired, we would mark and label the oven, but it is not marked and labeled, so my husband preset it for me. For. Uh, they can hear um, my voice, so. 350. 350. So normally for someone who's visually impaired, I would definitely mark and label that oven. But since ours is not, my husband had to do that part for me. Because you definitely don't want to lean over the stove. That is a hazard. All right. Now, I'm going to grab some tin foil. <laughs> tin foil. You definitely want to keep it from overflowing onto the oven. And once this oven preheats, and we let this cook for about 45 minutes to an hour, then I'll take the tin foil off and we'll let the cheese cook a little bit more. And yeah, 45 minutes. And then we'll let the and cheese brown. The rest of it will be 45 Yes. Uh, be careful. Is this a... Well, the thing about using tin foil mm -hmm. is when you take the tin foil off, the cheese will melt or already be melted. So when you take the tin foil off, all the melted <laughs> cheese is going to I've never had an issue with that, so. Well, uh, my suggestion was to spray, spray. Okay. the, the tin top foil. of the tin foil. All right. I, so if we're going to try it his way. Dick. So he's spraying the tin foil for me with cooking spray so it doesn't stick. I know it says not stick, but I don't like that. And then I'm going to put the tin foil back on. A pan, hugging the edges like a nice firm globe, and then we then we wait for the oven to preheat, and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're gonna put the um, lasagna in the oven here. So basically, how I do it is I will stand off to the side. You never want to stand in front of the oven. Your face is cut off. That's okay. Hold on. There you okay. go. You never want to stand in front of the oven because um, the steam will hit you right in the face. So I always stand off to the side. I'm going to open the oven all the way up. I'm going to pull out. Do you want it on the middle rack? Yeah. You want it on the middle rack. I'm going to pull out the middle rack. I'm using my oven mitts. I'm going to grab this dish with both hands. And I'm going to set it in the oven. And I'm going to push this back in. Close that. And Alexa, set the timer for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, starting now. And that's how you put the lasagna in the oven. Hey guys, so the timer just went off. Rearrange the kitchen here so I could film a little bit. Now, I've got my hot pads here. Again, standing off to the side, I'm going to open this oven all the way up, pull out the rack slightly, grab the lasagna, both hands, put it on the stove, and I'm going to briefly. Take this tin foil off. I'm gonna have to keep this <laughs> for use. We need the tin foil off to brown this cheese up a little more. Doesn't this look delicious so far?
People. This is what happens when you accidentally drop a pan. She dropped it. So we're gonna start from round two. We added more cheese. It's we added okay. More cheese. It's okay. It's still good. We're good. So I'm gonna open the door from the side. I can clean up the mess first. There you can still see probably listen on you. Pulling out the oven. Both hands. And I used both hands before. I think I missed. The, the oven rack here. And I'm pushing it back in. Alexa, set the camera for 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes, starting now. And that is how you take out the lasagna. I'm not going for round three, so this will be it until the lasagna is done. All right. So my husband pulled out the lasagna for me and this is the finished product because I didn't want to drop it again. My, my mistake was not pulling out the oven rack. All right, so it was a good, um, it was a good video today. But if you liked this video, like I was saying earlier, please subscribe and click that bell so you'll receive more notifications. And please comment down below if you um, want to see more like this. <laughs> Preferably not the dropping. And um, please follow me on Facebook, which is Amanda Suzanne. Twitter, which is Suzanne underscore Amanda. And TikTok, which is Ruby Red Queen 1.0. Talk to you all later on. And the lasagna, by the way, was on point. It was delicious, even though it was dropped. Bye!